one is Charlie Keegan. Charlie, you in the room? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about Charlie, a Kansas City native, Missouri State graduate. He's worked at the station since August 2017. Uh, recently, he reported at WPTV in West Palm Beach, Florida, but he does say Casey is home um, the history, legal leagues, based on museum, and he better know what barbecue to pick. So I will be calling your coworker just to check. So let's give him a round of applause in his absence. Okay, now this next sister, our keynote speaker, she's bad, y'all. You can read her whole resume. I'm gonna give you a few sentences because when she speaks, she's got power. Janine Uzel, CEO of National Society of Black Engineers, the Chief Executive Officer. Um, the largest student-run organization, I don't know if you knew that about NSB, in the United States, focused on improving the advancement of black engineers in academia and the industry with more than 30,000 members worldwide. But I can also tell you, she does some amazing work even in the midst of the aftermath of the racial trauma that we saw in 2020 with George Floyd. She invests herself full-heartedly in serving our community. And she's been appointed to President Biden's Board of Advisors on HBCUs, Historically Black Colleges and Universities. I don't need to say anything else. The resume speaks for itself, the track record does, and the history. But now I'm going to let her take over our keynote speaker. Let's stand up and welcome Janine Uzel. so much for having me. Good evening, good evening, good evening. It's so good to be here. I'm, uh, my name is Jeannie Uzel, a product of the Great Migration. Jay and Kate Uzel, who got together and thought it would be cool to raise me. Um, and they had some other kids too, but you know, that's not <laughs> And um, yeah, a long time ago, my dad, who sang with the Corsairs, came up from North Carolina. Um, on the circuit, singing doo-wop, ended up in Harlem at the Apollo Theater, sang for uh, Tough Records, and um, made some really great songs that we need to hear on the radio today, even though he's deceased, and um, married a, a woman in the 60s that was divorced and had two other children. That's a big deal in the 60s, I think. And uh, he was pretty bold, and he fell in love with this lady from North New Jersey who had never been farther than North New Jersey. And, um, and he married her and raised her other two children, my older siblings, and then had my brother and I. And um, here I am today, Kansas City. Um, I've been traveling the world and had some really cool jobs and done some work for GE and Wikipedia. And now I get to come back and have the honor of leading the organization that funded my education and um, built the tribe and the community around me. And um, I'm going to read my story, if you don't mind me reading. I can read. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a few things as I look around everyone, everywhere in this room. And I first of all want to say that I bring you greetings from the thousands upon thousands. 30,000 is just the the tipping point of, of the community that makes up Nesby. In fact, truth be told, we have no idea of the hundreds of thousands of black engineers and blacks in STEM that we've had an impact on over the years since 1975. But on behalf of all of those people everywhere, some of them in this room, uh, the members, the leaders, the alumni, and our friends, I greet you. I also greet you as a fellow member of the, your tribe. We may not know each other personally, but many of us have a commonality that is unspoken, but very evident. Particularly those of us who share the strand of DNA called melanin, the legacy of slavery, or any other cultural oppression, the gender of feminism, because I'm a woman. We may be from different cities, states, and streets, but there's something that connects us, and we don't have to know each other's names. We don't have to know each other's favorite songs. We don't even have to know what each other ate for lunch today. We're connected 
We're connected by the struggle of our ancestors who prayed and fought and voted for us to be in the place where we are today. Even here in this room at this wonderful, purposeful event, we're connected by the concept of villages that raised us, corrected us, covered us, and now boast of us. We're connected by the fears and the concerns we have because of our blackness, and we're just as connected by the pride that we have for that very same blackness. Some of us are connected because we've come this far by faith. Others, by way of our fight for the cause of justice. All of us, however stated, are connected tonight for the purpose of giving to that which is good and supporting the cause of that which is necessary. All of us are here to ensure that the future of the world, these gentlemen we just saw over here, and probably some of the young ladies that are in the room too, we're all here to ensure the future of the world is filled with the brilliance of the minds supported through the work of A. Steen Village and the leadership of William Wells and his team. There's an electric feeling here tonight. It's taking up a great space and it feels really good and emotional to be in a space like this and to see all of you. What I feel in this room tonight is hope. And the world needs what is in this room tonight. The world needs all of this right here. The world needs hope. Because out there is the weight of injustice, inflation, inequality. Out there is a world waiting to attack our confidence. Out there is a focus on division. But in here, there's a relentless pursuit to change what is out there. There's a mission in this room to serve a community of people and to rewrite their opportunities. The ACE mission to inspire students and families to pursue education and career pathways in the area of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, through community-based program learning and innovative programs. That's the hope that the world needs. Out there is a U.S. technology workforce made up of only 3.3% black men, 46.4% white men. The workforce out there is made up of 1.8% black women, the technical workforce. 17.7% .7 of them are white women. As a global technology leader, and all of us as technology consumers, we should be very concerned about these numbers that reflect the lack of diversity in our technology-driven world. This isn't just about a bad product experience. I don't like my headset or my iPhones or my Beats. This is a lack, this is about the lack of blackness and diversity in STEM, which is a very dangerous world for those of us, any of us who identify as other. In our colleges and universities, of the 2.5 million African Americans currently enrolled, only 1.17% are studying engineering. To sum that up, the number of black people designing, building, and solving the problems of the world through technology have hit a low. And we must be diligent in our pursuit to fill the pipeline, keeping STEM fun and relevant for this generation so that they are the future decision makers of the world because out there needs us. They need our legacy, they need our journey, they need our diversity of thought, they need our resiliency. They need the things that make us similar and the things that make us so uniquely different. Out there, even amid war, debt, and inflation, there is wealth, opportunity, and room to grow. Currently, the median net wealth for white families is only $188,000. For black families, it is $24,000 a year. Studies say that it would take black people over 288 years to catch up to the amount of net wealth that white people currently possess. STEM alone supports $2.3 trillion of the GDP. That is opportunity for each and every one of us and for the future of STEM. Out there is a world pushing back on the goals we set for our children and for their future. In here, we remind each other and the youth that we're supporting by giving our partnership 
we remind them that we will persist and we will repeat. Because many intend to do something great and few start and even fewer finish. The finishers are those that persevere. The world needs what's in this room tonight. Greatness. It's here in the mission of ACE, in the commitment to keep this great work going, in all of us represented here. I'm here today because despite the world out there, hope was spoken and whispered in my ear at a very young age, and I believed it. That took me from Bellevue Avenue in New Jersey to North Carolina A&T State University where I studied mechanical engineering. It took me from GE, where I worked for many, many years, to global leadership roles in Dubai, in India, in California, Africa. It took me from the walls of the United Nations to the hallways of the offices of NSB, where I now serve as the CEO. I'm here because of community, village, connectedness, and hope. I'm proof that the head of the table is wherever you sit. And if that can be my story, I want to encourage every AC mentor, leader, partner, and friend that your work and your giving is not in vain. Because my story is the same story of the young people that you support many, many years from now. So to all of the young people here tonight, dream big, be loud, be bold, and know that you are everything that the world out there needs. So now go and be your amazing self. Society of Black Engineers, the largest community of black people in STEM. Hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, millions and millions of dollars, millions of programs, millions of influencers around the world that have come through the pipeline, more than 700 chapters across the United States, chapters in Africa, chapters in Europe. And so I'm going to ask them to stand. First, Tony Harris, you stand. But I want to thank these gentlemen for their boldness. The, the same thing that they stood for in 1975 was a recognition that the world needed to know that people like us existed. And so they took a step and they joined with an advisor and they started the organization that still lives to this day. We'll be 50 years old in two years, and if I do my job well, we'll present a legacy to live for another 50, so thank you. One more time, Janine Zell, CEO. But I want to um, acknowledge what the co-founders are doing this week, a fireside chat. Do you mind if one of you can come up and just tell them really quick about it? I hate to put you on the spot, but I'm going to do it anyway. You got it, though. Thanks so much. I had to come up here because I was afraid of this 125 pounds, five foot old. First of all, on behalf of all the founders, I want to thank you all for being here, for acknowledging us, and it's such a pleasure to work with the esteem and all the work that you've been doing. Uh, later this week, there are several things going on. Actually, you should have William up here telling you about it. But I guess on Friday morning at 10 a.m., there's going to be a, uh, a panel discussion with all the founders, all four of us, as well as some of the, uh, the black inventors, I understand. And we're going to talk a little bit about compare and contrast what it was like back in 1975 
with the what's going on in 2022 and beyond, and how hopefully together we can achieve our goal of 10,000 graduates in 2025. So hopefully we'll see you all on Friday morning. And again, thank you for having us. Thank you so much for joining us. So now we're here for our 50-50 raffle, I believe. We're going to get a little help. 